So we've all had them games we were fond of when we were younger but we've not played in years and Chase the Express on the PS1 is exactly that for me. I mean will this be a trip down nostalgia lane or it will be the case of being like all children, a massive At the time of its release this game got, well didn't get much apparently, it only got two reviews and they were divided but IGN gave it a 4.8 and as we all know IGN are the most trust- Pff, I can't say that with a straight face. Anyway, the game starts out and we are told the bullet train in the Blue Harvest is escorting the French ambassador, who speaks in a clean American accent. Wait! My family is still out there! We also meet our hero, American agent Jack Morton, who is escorting the bullet train with his squad by helicopter. He also seems to be speaking in a French accent. I bet the Russians are saying the same thing about us! I think there was a mix-up with the roll sheets here. But some terrorists who aren't from the Middle East because this game was released one year before 9-11 takes over the train and takes the ambassador's family hostage and wipe out Jack's squad. And the terrorists have nuclear weapons on board and plan to nuke France when the train arrives there and it's up to Jack to go in alone, rescue the ambassador and his family and stop the nuclear threat. Jack Bauer eat your heart out. TELL ME WHERE THE BOMB IS! And this is where the game starts out pretty excitingly. As well as straight after surviving a helicopter explosion, Jack gets into a 10 shootout on the roof of the high speed train. To be fair, the whole game starts out really promising. It feels like a cross between Resident Evil and Metal Gear Solid. You get the tank like resi controls and the feeling of being alone like in both games. And the game really can be somewhat scary in places. Take this part for example, I'm just minding my own business and this bloke walks in like... <laughs> and shivs me in the bollocks. Ammo and health is somewhat limited as well, and the game has a nice sense of tension going as well, since the further you get into the game, the closer the train gets to its nuclear target, and the game keeps reminding you of that. And the game controls similar to Resident Evil as well. I say similar because Jack feels more mobile and has more accuracy in his movements than in Resident Evil. Also, you get the ability to crouch behind cover and roll out and shoot enemies, which is really handy. You can also pick up diary entries from passengers and other personnel to give you clues as to where to progress, so it's pretty clear where this game's inspiration comes from. But after a while exploring the train gets really boring. Now I think it's safe to assume most of us have been on a train and can vouch they're not the greatest places to explore, and the whole game takes place on it. But trains can be good as a small section of a game. Resident Evil Zero had a good train section, so did Uncharted 2. In Final Fantasy VI you could suplex a train which would liven up this game a lot. And what makes it worse is the backtracking. Basically the whole game ends up boiling down to go down a number of carriages, collect a key or item, run all the way back to the carriage you were at previously, then use the key or the item, rinse and repeat. And since there's not much variation in the environments either, it becomes a huge slog just to play. And combine that with the loading screens pretty much every time you go through a door, it's like one of the trials of Hercules. And the terrorists don't seem to be much of a threat. When you shoot them they get stun locked and if you crouch in front of them they don't seem to have the common sense to shoot down. But alas I slogged on and back to the plot. You find the ambassador and his assistant being guarded by one guard. Obviously wasn't that important then to the terrorists. He refuses to leave and then tells you to rescue his family. You rescue the ambassador's wife and daughter. Terrorists get angry for the rescue and want to nuke somewhere along the way. You stop them again. The terrorists are going to launch a missile. Is there any way to stop them? That screwdriver. You find the terrorist leader and have a girly chase with him, then kill him. So we go back through the training search, bowering terrorists and backtracking some more. And just before you start to fall asleep, we are awarded with this Oscar nominee scene. Now, who do you think has the advantage right now? Christina, don't move! Stand up! Stop where you are! <laughs> Ambassador! Are you alright? Did you get hit? No, no, I think it just grazed the helmet. And after that treat, we go back through more samey corridors, shooting more samey terrorists and arsing loading screens. Along the way, we find out the terrorists have access to the universal f***ing soldier and the genome army from Metal Gear Solid. After ruining their day, we go back through the train, see more samey environments and you know the rest. 
We then catch up to Mason who demands a date at Discofia. Now, depending on what dish you give him determines the ending. The only way to find out what one is the bad ending is to guess, see what ending you get and replay, then choose the other disc and get the other ending. Or you could just google it, but we didn't have that luxury back then and who'd want to play through this again? Then, just as you think the game's going to end, we have to all together now, environments, terrorists, loading, well done. Then when we do get there, we have minutes to spare to disarm the nuclear bomb the terrorists left behind. And when you do find these bombs, Jack disarms them as slowly as possible in the minigame. You'd think with Europe being on the verge of a nuclear attack, you'd get a f***ing jog on. But after that, it turns out Mason somehow got hold of an attack helicopter. And Jack goes out for one last showdown. That's if you get the good ending anyway. Anyway, you gun him down with your grenade launcher and everyone lives happy. Jack gets to nail his woman with the triangle tits and the French ambassador has his family back. Mm, yeah, it's very nice. I've got to admit, it's disappointing to go back to a game I used to love as a kid and then hate it with a passion now, but I suppose it further goes to prove that all children are stupid. Hey, look at you staying till the end of the video. But joking aside, thank you for watching. If you like what I did here, please give a like, subscribe and share. And there's a link here to my Silent Hill retrospective. Cheers.